Hi, I'm Daryl Tank. I'm going to do another demonstration in the ongoing critique series. Uh, a student has sent this in, and I really like the drawing. It's something that a lot of us could probably imagine doing. Yet, I'm going to take the opportunity to show you some of the things that I have talked about. And remember that I'm going to do everything in the context of the five pencil method, just so that I can keep encouraging you to watch for certain things that I think are key and could actually take your pictures to another level. I want to take the opportunity to show you a little bit about structure and even though it might be hard to uh, identify some things because of the way the lighting is or the angle, we can also look for some of those things to be our advantage as well. So if we take uh, a few common sense approaches to this I think we can go ahead and do a lot better job in interpreting, again, the structure. This is very, very common in that when we have a, a face turned, it could be a person, it could be the dog, that it often throws us out of uh, what their actual proportions or perspective is. Uh, we sometimes want to try and do what we're familiar with, and that is maybe the straight-on face, and we forget about some of the angles that are going to, I think, be critical. Let me just see what I can do. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at how I can uh, have some uh, conformity here in that there is an equivalent uh, to both sides of the nose. They may be interpreted a little different, but I want to suggest that this isn't coming out of this side of the face, but it is actually coming from the center. And so there's a few little structures that I think I'll do. I'm going to go ahead again and make sure I know what's in front of what. I'm going to have somewhat of a clean line, and I've established my light source, and I'm going to make this soft. I don't want this to come all the way up though because uh, I, want, I want to have this nebulous nature about this that it fades away. I'm going to go over here now and I'm going to find the equivalent, the equivalent here, can, maybe I need to move this a little bit. I'm going to find the equivalent to this side of the face and it looks a little different because we, we can't see all the way around on you know all this surface over here. Somewhere along the line it went around and out of our sight so we need a clean edge. A clean edge is often a little deceiving because we don't see it as a clean edge. We have fur on this and so it's a little bit harder to identify. But I think for uh, just illustrative purposes here to demonstrate this point that we can go ahead and suggest that I can't see this side but this side is shading the rest of that dog. There is a very shallow uh, uh, shadow here because there has been flash used. And you know what I've said about flash. If this is the dark side of the dog and this is the major light source, or these are the apexes of the curves, then this wouldn't necessarily be that bright. But it's because flash was projecting light into a place that it normally would not have gone under normal circumstances. So I want to look at this very uh, thin shadow here and realize that I could probably take a little bit of a liberty here. I can broaden it out a little bit, have a clean edge, and what it's shading. I'll come in there and make it a little uh, more irregular, uh, suggesting that it's an edge to fur. But anyway, this helps us start again incorporating this structure on both sides of the face instead of just having this go in and this being a center area here where everything guides us back to this. I don't know whether you can see that or not. So I want to de-emphasize this. Let me see if I can, I can take that back just a little bit. And something else that I want to open up is this right here. Because it isn't necessarily an opening to the mouth. So I'm backing that off. And then I want to make sure I know that this is not just part of the mouth, but it is actually an edge to the jaw. So I want to be able to 
again show this as the clean edge and this as what it's in front of. This is behind. So I can demonstrate that with my shadow edge. So now we have this mouth coming forward. By taking this shadow out and showing that this is behind that jaw, that, that mouth. And we're already starting to get a little bit of a, a little bit of a, uh, a dimension happening here. Now let's go ahead and take this up here and then maybe at some point we know we can't really see it anymore because the muzzle is in front of it. So we can have you know some of our our uh, fur coming out here and it would probably make a little bit of an irregular edge. Okay, Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the the things about the eye that I think are are a little bit different. This right here isn't round this way. We see a crescent here and the the uh, point comes down more towards the tear duct or whatever you want to call it, the equivalent to what we have as, as humans. And this doesn't go as far over here. It's more our, our part of that part of the eye is more blocked because of the structure of the well, I don't know what you want to call it. But anyway, this is kind of the brow, the bridge of the nose, for you know going into the brow. But it helps us be able to show that maybe we can't see all of the eye because it goes behind this structure. Now we have an equivalent to what's going on over here, and yet we almost have a fold in the eyelids like we've talked about. That helps. This helps. And we start having a new opportunity for dimension just by looking at a few things. The shape of this eye, I think, was critical. Now let's go ahead and make sure that we have this in the center of that round iris. Let's maybe make this over here, a little adjustment here as well. And I'm going to take, just like this is blocking the view of that part of the eye, I'm going to go ahead and show that this goes up and it ends right here because this is blocking the view of that part of the eye. Can you see some of the perspective starting to change a little bit? I want to also be able to take some of this off. I'm going to de-emphasize some of this because again our our structure is probably more like this I may mean, not look like it because it's it's got that light again projected into places that we normally wouldn't see it except if we were using flash that horizontal projection of light So let's let's take this up and stop it there as well. Ooh, that 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 looks good. Now we have kind of an eyelid, uh, you know, uh, covering part of the eye, just like it would be in uh, real life or a human or. Very good. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a couple things we might do with the nose. If this nose is turned like this, we're going to be seeing this not symmetrical and and not be looking into the nostrils in the same way but this truly is going to become an edge and we'll have a shadow on that side but we want to de-emphasize the fact that we're looking inside the nose over here we could be looking inside just a little bit more because of the angle of the nose now with a dog structure I may not get it exactly right but we have this kind of a flap to the nose that's kind of in a, an edge uh, that goes up to the nostril. And then I want to emphasize this a little more. Everything uh, helping me understand that we have a wedge or a wedge shape to the face and we have a uh, muzzle 
that has uh, you know a dimension and a perspective to it and so this helps us I'm going to take I hope some of this off maybe not so much I'm going to take this eraser here and see if we can get a little bit more of that off and let's put on a little heavy so we take our brush and get this stuff off here well some things will work and some things won't when we're doing these demos but now uh, the the front of the nose has a a, uh, a facet probably about like so so we're not looking at it like this we're looking at it like this so what can help us suggest that let's go ahead and take this that little division in a, in a dog's nose and let's put it in a little different place a little different angle So this is going to be very quick. I just wanted to give some general ideas about some of the things that can, again, de-emphasize, bring a little logic to it, and help us take it out of this uh, distortion. It's very easy to have if you don't look for certain things in your picture. So again, flash, I think, is one of the things that keeps us from seeing so many of these uh, structural uh, parts. And yet, if you understand, uh, you know, your, how to use your light and whatever, you can take some liberties here as well. But I think you can probably see that this face is starting to change dramatically in uh, the direction and attitude. Let's try and take a little bit of that off. And so this actually, you know, probably comes out like this a little more. Well, that makes it more equivalent to this. Now we're starting to get that, that slant that we have to both eyes. Now, one of the other things is that uh, uh, I'm a little confused about, when I look at this, I'm a little confused about the edge of the tongue. I wish there was a little more of it to show. But I think the tooth is just a little different than this. So let's go ahead and see if we can take out some of that as well. And this tongue actually is, is, uh, is going up and over that tooth. And then it actually looks like maybe there's even another tooth in here. Can't draw all that stuff in here, but some of these things become great opportunities for us to bring this back into the dimension and the perspective and all the things that make even what we can see start working quite well. One of the other things that I, I would suggest is that you can develop a style like this where your lines are all going diagonal or all going vertical or all going horizontal. I've done a number of pictures where that was my whole intent was to uh, develop a whole other look and technique to it. But in this case with a dog it would be nice if you could look at this and see that these uh, the direction of the hair changes and if you rotate your picture around you'll be able to uh, you know, achieve that, that natural direction and that, uh, that uh, fanning out of the dog's fur from a central location. And this isn't going to be, uh, you know, refined in any way. I don't expect this to really look like a whole lot except to just show you the direction again. And so if I keep turning my picture around, I should be able to better, uh, you know, uh, capture that um, to uh, to actually draw that uh, direction of the hair if I keep turning around. 
Otherwise, I've got to keep coming up with a different stroke and a different stroke. And this actually just keeps coming all the way around until at this point it's even actually going almost exactly the opposite of all this other structure here. So it's one of the things that isn't that hard to do. And if you think about it, uh, why not? Why not go ahead and have this uh, become another opportunity for dimension and, uh, and realism? It doesn't have to be taken that far if you don't want but you have the hair in a believable, logical way. It looks kind of strange when I'm going across what's been done there before, but I just, again, want to emphasize that we have this all coming out in a specific direction. Here's a part of the uh, shape of the head that we could go ahead and take advantage of too. Very crude, but at least uh, we can get there. And uh, I can't do everything with this picture except uh, show you where I would take advantage of some of the uh, depth opportunities. And uh, it just would change a whole lot of how this picture is uh, looking dimensionally. Because this is probably behind the majority of this hair. So Maybe I can take advantage. I even see a little bit of the back of the ear, so I could go ahead and take advantage of that and show that it's darker as it went down behind there. There's probably a little bit of an indentation down the center of the head, so we can establish where that is. For a dog, it's, it's uh, probably something that's going to be to our advantage again. So here we have Because this is darker, it's around behind, I can go ahead and suggest that it's quite a bit darker. Even though this isn't a very dark dog. Still can take advantage of light. So now let's come over here on this side, just do a little bit more. And then I'll, I'll be, uh, I think, finished with what I can show you. Unless I just kept drawing. But it still, if you if you wanted to do a very free, uh, you know, sim simple drawing, you could do something and still take advantage of some of these dimensional opportunities, uh, looking at the structure, taking advantage of how light works, just like I'm going to do right there, showing that there's something farther past the head and the ear by taking this and making it darker back there. And what happens when something goes to where there's less light? It's darker here then it will be out here. So all these little V's and places that are divisions in between the hair can be a little darker when you see how it starts helping us develop that dimension again. So here we have an opportunity to go past that white hair and the sides of the face. And boy, we had a lot more going on in this picture than we might have thought just by stopping to think about what each thing is. What is the equivalent over here on this side to this side? Then we have a few a uh, few things that would help us again show that there are, there is a little bit. I don't want this to be too strong, but you know there is a little bit over here that will help us create a bridge to the nose and have it going the right direction. I'm just trying to mark out areas that you might consider when you're uh, drawing a dog you can look for some of these opportunities I don't have all the answers but I uh, I think that uh, if I can show you what to look for you know you can uh, do quite a bit more with your subject I'll bring this in here because this is over here quite a bit now, I can't take everything out either so then we can make sure we can play off of this and make this darker. It's on the dark side of the muzzle. And you can see how that too starts pushing it back. So I hope this uh, kind of helps. We have an equivalent to this tooth over here. This uh, probably just a little bit is 
is probably sticking up or that is going around but this just starts giving us a good dimensional opportunity so I hope that uh, this might help some of you when you're uh, interpreting a dog there are going to be more values that we can bring in here this over here is some of this over here there's usually an equivalent it may be in the light and the other ones in the dark but uh, it took a lot of that distortion out of the face that's so easy to have happen when you're drawing something that's turned and not fully facing us. It's not symmetrical anymore. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. Again, structure in the case of a dog instead of a person, but there's a lot of similarities. And uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helped you and I'll see you in the next demo. Have fun drawing.